Our next panelist, Denise Duffield, will be discussing the Back from the Brink campaign as a US pathway to eliminate nuclear weapons by building the grassroots power needed to generate the political will for a fundamental change in US nuclear weapons policy at the federal level. Denise is the Associate Director of Physicians for, so for Social Responsibility Los Angeles, PSRLA. She directs PSRLA's Nuclear Threats Program, which advocates for health protective policies related to nuclear weapons and nuclear energy. Denise leads PSRLA's participation in the Back from the Brink campaign to bring local communities together to build the public support and political will needed for a fundamental change in US nuclear weapons policy. Denise also works on environmental health and justice issues, addressing the needs of local communities who are impacted by toxic and nuclear contamination and the failure of regulatory agencies to protect them. Denise also serves on the board of the Alliance for Nuclear Accountability, ANA, a national network of organizations that works to address issues of nuclear weapons production and waste cleanup. Denise, welcome to the panel. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Danny, and thank you so much to everyone who joined us here today. I'd like to give a very special thank you to Beatrice and to ICANN. You have shown all of us that with your spirited organizing, dedication, and persistence in the face of incredibly powerful opposition, we can achieve our shared goal of a world without nuclear weapons. Back from the Brink offers a roadmap for, nu a roadmap for nuclear abolition here in the United States. We're calling upon the U.S. to enter negotiations now with other nuclear armed states for a verifiable, enforceable, time-bound agreement to eliminate their weapons. We also call on the U.S. to unilaterally adopt a number of policies to reduce the danger of nuclear war while these negotiations proceed. And I do have a PowerPoint, and I'd like to call up the first slide. There we go. So what is Back from the Brink? Back from the Brink was conceived in late 2017 as a national initiative, initiative inspired by the UN adoption of the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons and the growing alarm over our then president's nuclear saber rattling. The campaign was convened by Physicians for Social Responsibility and the Union of Concerned Scientists with the intention that it not be owned by any group or person, but would instead solicit participation and endorsements from a diverse array of organizations, municipalities, states, and individuals. The idea was to create a simple but scalable way that anyone, any activist, any individual, any organization can engage in their community in a national campaign that helps build political will for fundamental changes in US nuclear weapons policy and nuclear abolition. Today, Back from the Brink is coordinated by representatives from several PSR chapters, Union of Concerned Scientists, Soka Gakai International USA, United Church of Christ, and the Outrider Foundation. A task force of these and other organizations and individuals meets monthly to plan initiatives. Local chapters of several endorsing organizations such as Pax Christi, Peace Action, and Veterans for Peace have led successful back from the brink efforts throughout the country. Next slide. The core of the Back from the Brink campaign is the call for the U.S. to commit to the abolition of nuclear weapons now and to begin detailed, ne detailed negotiations with the other eight nuclear armed states that will bring them all into compliance with the TPNW. We also call on the U.S. to take four other common sense policy solutions to reduce the danger of nuclear war as these negotiations get underway. We're calling upon the United States to lead a global effort to prevent nuclear war by renouncing the option of using nuclear weapons first. Until nuclear weapons are abolished, the US should declare that it will never use them first. Ending the sole unchecked authority of any president to launch a nuclear attack, because no one person should have the power to destroy life as we know it. Taking US nuclear weapons off hair trigger alert. The US has 400 missiles and underground silos right now that can be launched within minutes, which presents a very real risk of accidental nuclear war, and canceling the plan to replace its entire arsenal with enhanced weapons. The US plans to spend $1.7 trillion over the next 30 years to replace the entire nuclear arsenal with enhanced weapons. This is an outrageous and unnecessary squandering of our tax dollars, especially at a time of so many urgent human and environmental needs. Next slide. Back from the Brink is a national campaign that's built on local organizing. Members of Congress and the administration won't make nuclear abolition a priority without hearing about it from their constituents. 
but much of the public has no idea how dangerous, how expensive, how unjust, or just how harmful to health and the environment these weapons are. Back from the Brink seeks to address this problem by engaging local advocates who work in their communities to secure organizational endorsements and local government resolutions in support of our policy platform. This process builds public awareness of the threats posed by nuclear weapons while communicating the urgent need to address this threat to decision makers in Washington, DC. Next slide. Over 350 health, policy, faith, peace, environmental, and justice groups have endorsed Back from the Brink, from the Sierra Club to Indivisible, to the US Conference of Mayors, to most major faith denominations, to cat lovers against the bomb. If you haven't endorsed yet, please do. Our website is preventnuclearwar.org and we'll have information on that at the end. Next slide. To date, nearly 50 municipalities and six state legislative bodies have voted to adopt resolutions supporting Back from the Brink's policy platform, including major cities like Baltimore, Los Angeles, Salt Lake City, Tucson, Washington, DC, Honolulu, Portland, Philadelphia, the state of California, the state of Oregon, the Maine Senate, and the New Jersey Assembly. Next slide. Most Back from the Brink resolutions include a call for the U.S. to embrace the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which means these municipalities and states can join ICANN Cities Appeal. 35 of 37 U.S. cities that are part of ICANN Cities Appeal joined through Back from the Brink resolutions. And here's a photo of Beatrice with Washington, D.C. City Council Member David Grosso after the D.C. Uh, adopted its resolution and with uh, Los Angeles City Council Member Paul Koretz, who sponsored our resolution here. Next slide. Back from the Brink activists often customize resolutions to make them more relevant and persuasive to their communities. Some include whereas statements about the impact of, nuclear, of, a, of a nuclear weapons production facility in the region, or how much money in tax dollars their city spends for nuclear weapons. Some emphasize the environmental health and justice impacts of nuclear weapons mining, production, testing, and waste on US communities. Some communities include support, include support for other disarmament efforts, in addition to Back from the Brink in the TPNW, including divestment, making their city a nuclear weapons free zone, diplomacy with Iran, or a citizens commission to study the impact of the TPNW in the region. Next slide. Back from the Brink can be a great tool for reaching out to local groups and building new relationships and coalitions. For example, to win passage of its Back from the Brink resolution, PSR Oregon pulled together a coalition of health professionals, Hanford Downwinders, Habaka Shah, the Marshallese community, atomic veterans, and faith, environmental, and justice groups. Next slide. The Syracuse Peace Council uh, also organized many groups in support of their Back from the Brink resolution, and their mayor even declared August 6th Back from the Brink Day. Next slide. It's also really nice to win sometimes. Um, we have been really heartened by responses from municipal and state leaders. Local officials may not have time to read a nuclear weapons policy papers, but they will read a resolution when it's brought to them by their constituents. And many are leaning in. City leaders are asking questions. They're taking time to think critically about nuclear weapons and make a decision on where they stand. We don't see much of that in Congress, yet. Also, today's city council member might be tomorrow's U.S. Senator. That's the case for me here in California with um, U.S. Senator Alex Padilla. Next slide. The U.S. movement for nuclear abolition is growing. Yes, we need to be bigger. We need to be younger, more diverse, and it's a real problem that we aren't. But the good news is that we want to be. Building a diverse movement is one of the most popular workshops today. And there are new efforts to work in solidarity with and center the voices of frontline nuclear communities in the movement. Over a thousand people registered for this policy briefing. Last summer, nuclear abolitionists came together for Still Here, a beautiful virtual event to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And a few weeks ago, activists throughout the country and the world celebrated the TPNW's entry into force with over 100 events. Banner, banner hangings, church bells ringings, all kinds of creative actions. So there is movement in the movement. I think this is truly the beginning of the end of nuclear weapons. Next slide. 
If you haven't yet, please endorse Back from the Brink and get involved. Our website has an advocacy tool section with organizing guides and sample resolutions and an interactive map that can help you connect with others. We're always looking for more folks to work with us to grow and manage this campaign. So please email us if you're interested. Our website is pretty easy to remember, preventnuclearwar.org. And the email is info at preventnuclearwar.org. Thank you.